Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, thank you for watching and supporting the previous episodes. And in this video, we're going to be continuing the sci-fi environment art series. But now, instead of just working on tiling materials, I'm going to start modeling some modular components and some environment pieces. So that's going to be pretty cool because modeling is, in my opinion, more fun than just creating textures. So going to open up Blender, which is my modeling program, but anything works. And so while I'm starting this, it's important to consider scale. So like I said, all the tiling textures are going to be four by four units. And the reason I came up with this is because a standard character in my Unity game is about two units tall. So I'll just make this cube here and call it player. And you can see in this transform panel here, this cube is one by one by two. And I'll just reset the transforms on that. So basically I want every small floor piece to be about twice the size of the player. So that's the goal. So this plane will just represent the floor for now, but I'll just shift D to duplicate it rotate it this way so now we have our first wall basically and I'll just make a duplicate of that so basically the floors are all going to be flat planes because I don't want to waste geometry on the floors especially when we made some nice tiling materials for the floor but the walls are going to be different I'm probably going to use a lot of geometry on the walls and sometimes in like an open world, you might want to keep the geometry simple. So for optimization purposes, um, but since this is just going to be some spaceship corridors and there's only going to be a couple walls and things and the view distance won't be very far, we can sort of put a lot of intricate details into these walls and a lot of small pieces of geometry. So that's cool. So I'm going to go in with some loop cuts and start cutting this up. And so I'm going to select this middle wall and separate by selection. So I'll call this the mid wall. I'm going to take this one, separate it by selection again, call it low wall and call the top one the high wall. And I'm gonna take all three of these and just sort of like make a safe copy of it. Because I'm gonna iterate on this and make multiple versions, so it's nice to have another copy so I don't have to redo it every time. So I didn't really think yet about what I want the design to be because I sort of wanted to do it on camera. So, still thinking about it um, I might want it to come out a little bit like that yeah this is gonna be too tall though something like that and then I can sort of put some cabinets in here like something that would resemble a cabinet um so yeah, that's cool. Okay. For this wall here, I might duplicate it again and make two versions. Um, I'm gonna drag this down. So I want these to sort of match up. So in this transform panel here, you can see this is now negative 1.5 on the Y. So if we make this negative 1.5, they should match up because they share the same uh, transform. So that's pretty cool. It's a nice way to get them to link together. And I'll probably just focus on this low wall for this video because it actually takes a lot of time. So I'm going to control B to bevel. Okay, I was just making sure the scale is correct. So yeah, we don't need... That, that bevel might be enough, especially 
when we use the face weighted normals later, it will sort of smooth out that bevel in a nice way. So yeah, that bevel might be enough. I'm gonna shift A, create a smaller cube. And I sort of want some detail here on the bottom. Make a copy of it. I like making copies because it just speeds up the process a little bit. If we need another cube later on, which we definitely will, just speeds it up. Okay, I'll fix the scale. Okay, that's not bad. But I'm also going to bevel these edges too. And I'm gonna loop cut this down the middle, mark seams. So then we can go with the face uh, selection onto this side. Control L to select all of the faces on this side. And the reason it doesn't select the ones on this side is because we have the seam in the middle here. And I'll delete these faces. Then what I can do is click on the wrench icon, add a mirror modifier across the X axis, turn on clipping. So now it's nice and mirrored. And I want the locations of these to be pretty symmetrical. Then I'll join them with this. Okay, cool. So now I'm going to click on the 3D cursor icon. So now wherever I click, the 3D cursor will switch to that location. And that way, any mesh we spawn in will generate on top of that 3D cursor. So I'm going to add in a cylinder. 32 vertices is definitely too high poly. Maybe, maybe 8 will do the trick. And rotate that on the Y. And Control J to join it with this mesh. And now I sort of want to make a pipe going across this whole thing. We don't need that face there. It's nice to delete any faces that you won't be able to see because it saves on performance. And also when you unwrap the model, it saves on uh, texturing space. I might also um, use a matte cap as well. Yeah, why not? Okay. Um, Shift C to switch the cursor back to its normal spot. All right, so that's not bad. I'm gonna duplicate it one time just to be safe. I'll drag that over there. I duplicate things a lot and I'm going to save this just so we don't lose any progress. I'll call it environment creation. whatever all right so now I'm going to start putting on the face weighted normals so we'll go into the object data properties normals and auto smooth and then I'll go into the wrench icon and in the modifiers tab we'll add weighted normals I'm gonna bump the weight up all the way and use face influence. And that looks pretty good. Yeah, I like that. Okay. Um, one thing I wonder is if these are too prominent. So I might just scale them down and see. Take this bar or pipe or whatever. And just push it into the wall a little more. Yeah, I think that looks better than that over there. Okay, cool. 
trying to think of what I want to do next. Put in the loop cut. Um, right click to edge slide. Bump this out a little bit. Um, I'm gonna switch to local too. I know it won't really affect this, but I like working in local a little better. Okay. That looks good right there. Duplicate this into that spot and delete that one. Okay. And I'm still trying to come up with designs. But what I think I'll do is this should use a loop cut there right in the middle and one here I'll slide that up and I'm going to use another one control B and control B to bevel that as well okay And I'm going to slide this here, and sort of even this out, because I'm assuming there's going to be some type of column here, but I still want some cabinets. So I won't put a cabinet in this section, but I'll have cabinets here. So I'm going to press I to inset 0.01, I to inset 0.01. And I'm going to delete this space. And what I'll do is join this together. So now we have one big cabinet in the middle and one small one on either side. And I'll go to individual origins and scale these. Okay, so that looks good. And I'll just extrude it out. Just a little bit. And scale it in. And scale it out on the X. Okay, so I know you can't really see it. Might help if maybe we had a little bit of ambient occlusion, but I don't think that affects anything besides the render. Yeah, okay. But if we were to go into rendered view, you can see them a little better because there's AO. Okay. So I'm going to control B to bevel these. And now I want to make the edges a little more curved. So I'm going to highlight all these edges with uh, with uh, shift alt left click. Press C for the select tool. And select all the edges I don't need. Okay, and now uh, control B to bevel all of this. That might be a little too much. That should be good. Then C, 
middle mouse button to sort of trim away everything I don't want to keep selected. Okay, so now that we have this, control B one more time. So now we really rounded out those corners and it looks pretty good. All right, nice. So now I might inset these. And I want to merge that together. Could bump it out a little bit more. And that looks pretty good. Okay, I'm trying to think about what else I want to do. So I could start by just re-apologizing re these a little bit. So I'll merge all these vertices at last in all of these corners. So pretty simple. And we have some weird shading going on, but we'll fix that later. So I think what I'll need to do is select this and put in one more small bevel. Yeah, that'll fix that for the most part. All right, cool. Um, okay. Let me grab this. Put in one more detail here. Control B to bevel. And delete any faces as we go back that you won't see. So any faces from the side. Okay, cool. So now these cabinets will, are going to need some details on them, like handles, hinges, all that. So I'll start by detailing this one. Okay. So we could extrude scale. Something like that. And I'm trying to make this more of a nicely rounded corner than it currently is because the extrude scale sort of warped it a little bit. So I'm just doing that by scaling it in little by little and that looks better. And I'm going to take these um, polygons, inset them and extrude them down. Kind of gives a nice little detail there. And extrude it down one more time. 
scale. Deselect the side ones. Scale these on the X. And this the shading's a little off, so it that when that happens, it tells you it needs some more uh, supporting bevels. So you can see this is not low poly. This is for a game, but it doesn't have to be low poly because when you're only making a small corridor environment, there's not much else to load in. You know, if you look outside, it's just space. There's not much happening. So you really don't have to render all that much. So the stuff you do render, you can sort of put some more details in it that you wouldn't be able to if it was like this big open world. So I'm trying to figure out what needs to be beveled and what doesn't. I guess that doesn't have to be beveled either. Okay, that looks good. So every single corner should be getting beveled. I just want to double check that. Yep, that's the case. So cool. Then I'm just going to go around and read to apologize just a little bit. Because it's some vertices, there's just no point in them being there. So when that happens, I'm happy to delete them. And I think that takes care of it. I want to keep all of these, I think. But what I will do is to not have any end gons I'll inset it go into vert select and merge them all at center yeah and we can do that as well here I don't think it would be a big deal to have end gons because these are pretty flat surfaces anyways, but just in case. And I think Blender will triangulate your FBXs on export anyways, but just to be safe. Okay, cool. So the shading is definitely much better now. Um, So I think any handle I do, I could probably just do in the normals in Substance Painter. So that's probably what I'll do there. Um, yeah. Going to copy this cylinder. Scale it down a lot. And I just want two of them side by side here. And I'll just drag out both of these edges. Make sure their medians are at negative two on the X. So that means it's spread all the way out. And I'm going to loop cut each of these. Probably, probably twice. Yeah. 
and now I'll select each loop cut that I did. And it's important that you're in individual origins for this. I'm going to control B to bevel them. B to extrude, scale, then scale them on the X again. Okay. And now I want to offset them so they're not uh, perfectly symmetrical like that. So I'll just move them around in random ways. Okay, cool. I think this should be a little bit more prominent. Which means I'm going to have to go back in and bevel these sides one more time. Okay, let's put the 3D cursor over here. Add in one more cylinder. And these will be the hinges. And I wanted to have the right rotation so it can just glide along. It's a little too much. It's a little tricky, but that's pretty good. Now I'll give it some like end caps. Control J to join them together. It still looks like they're floating a little bit. So I might just push them down into the mesh. Maybe a little bit into that. So this one can go down that way. Yeah, that looks better. So what I'll do is put another one there and put another one right in the middle. And the one in the middle is going to be a bit bigger.
Okay, so what I'm going to do is delete this one. And since it's still rotated the proper way, I'll just throw a mirror on. And set the origin to like there. Okay. So now I only have to do one side. Okay, and yeah, we don't want that. Okay, nice. Put some bevels on as long as the scale is okay, which it is. And finally, I'll add a small cylinder. Okay, that's all we need. So I'll apply the mirror. Shift C to return the cursor back to normal. I'll join that up with that and join it up with the final mesh. And this too. So now I want another detail here. So this is going to be a little bit bigger, so I'll do 12 verts instead. Rotate this. And we want to drag it right up to the surface, uh, just like the other ones. Okay, so now I'm going to extrude this on the Z, scale it on the X, scale it on the Y as well. There we go.
and if there were any faces at the bottom which i think there were a few gonna have to delete those is there more oh yeah this whole big one okay cool and i don't think i like that it curves that much so i'll keep that flat Shift D, drag it down, join it. Okay. So, yeah, just adding in some nice surface details to make it feel a little more real. And half the job is literally just the texturing. To add in a lot of details that we can't do with modeling because that would just push the geometry detail um, way too high but we can still do a lot with the modeling portion i'm thinking if there's anything else i might want to do um, maybe something with this cabinet Oh, okay, it needs hinges. Definitely needs hinges. So I'll take all these and just uh, reuse them. So we'll shift D and then we'll drag it out. Yeah, that looks better. So this is the height of the player. If our camera was here and we were looking around, that's a pretty highly detailed model. And it's 1,900 verts per side. So yeah, it's a pretty high density model. And there's things we could read to apologize, you know, like um, dragging in these corners to here and um, merging them, stuff like that. We don't need all that geometry. So I might go ahead and do that. Yeah, I could do that. So you can see I expanded the bottom wall a little bit more. So I'm going to drag these out to account for that. All right, yeah, so overall, it's pretty solid. I think this might be able to benefit from a little more geometry. So I'm going to make a pretty small detail here. Like some sort of knob. And the normals are off on that, so I'll do Control N to fix those normals. Uh, is there anything else I want to do? It's always the challenge. Sometimes you just feel like there's never enough detail. 
and sometimes when you unwrap everything and you go to texture it sometimes it's too late to add more so now is really the time um, honestly I don't know I might do one more thing Okay, so in object mode, I'll add one more cube. Um, did not mean to do that. I'll rotate it on this axis. Delete the back face. Extrude, rotate, extrude, rotate, and extrude down the axis. Nope. Let's go to global. Extrude down the axis. And I'm going to want to mirror that on the other side. So I'll separate it from the rest of the model by just selecting with control L and separating it from the model with control P separate by selection. And we need to give it a new origin. So let's say right there, then we'll mirror it on the Z. Or was it okay? Oh, I see. Okay, so let's not join it with the rest of the model first. There we go. Select it. Set the new origin. Go into local, add the new modifier now. Yep, that works. Right, cool so that looks like most of the modeling done and I say most because I might go back later and realize this is not enough but yeah I think it looks pretty good so probably in the next video I'll work on the other wall panels and then later on, we'll UV unwrap it and texture them in Substance Painter. So, yeah, I can't wait for that. It's going to look really good in the end. So thank you guys for watching. Um, make sure to like, subscribe, comment if you have any suggestions for future videos or things I could change. And, yeah, thank you guys for watching. See you next time.